this is our very first uh, play space zoom q a so thank you so much for being here today the reason why we're doing this is because uh with play space i'm doing this project uh, exploring children's creativity and they've got plenty of that and things that they do they love to do outside of school we've got quite a few of our children here who have been participating in a project on, oh, cre on creating um, we're, we're working on creating billboards that are going to be up in the summer in Hackney and they've been bringing all of their skills including a lot of drawing skills to bring them to life and yeah. when I asked the children what uh, they like to do outside of school comics and writing and graphic novels was really, really high on the list. Oh, and so that's why uh, I was very keen to sort of get you to come in and talk a bit about what it's like to be uh, to work in comics and to do graphic novels and sort of because this way, you know, like you can't really know what it takes to do that unless you sort of speak to people who do it. So um, so I was just about to start by doing a quick introduction about the three of you. And okay. then uh, the children will be able to ask you questions. I have questions of my own because, you know, curious. And then we'll take it from there. <laughs> so, um, first of all, uh, Mike Perkins, uh, you're a comic book illustrator. You've worked on uh, Captain America, Thor, Spider-Man, X-Men, and more for Marvel. You're now working for DC Comics. If I'm wrong about anything, you tell me. On um, Green Lanterns, you've collaborated with Greg Rucker on Lois Lane, Rucker and recently with Ram V on The Swamp Thing, which is amazing. And you've been featured on the New York Times bestseller list and exhibited in Munich, London and Paris. So that's, that's really impressive. <laughs> and that's all, all, our three, our three artists today are all like award winning artists for, for good reasons, but like really amazing work. Um, Mike Collins. Uh, you're a storyboard artist, uh, you work mostly for TV and film, uh, you're yeah. best known for your work on Doctor Who, yeah. Good Omens, and recently his Dark Materials, which yeah. I know a lot of our children, you can see some children here are very excited about that because it's, <laughs> it's really extraordinary, but also some brilliant children TV classics like Horrid Henry. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> Or, and you've worked on Doctor Who magazine, you've created graphic novels for Doctor Who and some merchandise that was even featured on the Big Bang Theory, I hear. Yes, yes. <laughs> me and Sherman in the same shot, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You've, you've written and drawn pretty much all the major characters for DC and Marvel and more, from Spider-Man, Transformers, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, Flash, Teen Titan, X-Men, and, and, and other <laughs> ones. <laughs> And finally, we have Jessica Martin here, and Jessica is a, is a, is a multi-talent um, of activity. Um, you've been, you're an actress, a comic artist, you've performed, you perform on stage, you do a lot of voice over artist work as well, and, and you do graphic novels and novels. So you really have a fantastic array of skills. Uh, you were famously Mags, the inter intergalactic werewolf in Doctor Who which is really cool and um, you were doing impressions on spitting image which sure that parents might remember and uh, and i noticed that you did the voiceover acting as well for the sandman for neil gaiman which is one of my favorite ever um your graphic novels you're influenced by your love of classical hollywood and uh, and your experience as a performer what i really wanted to do first of all is also share with jessica mike and michael uh, the work that you children have been doing in, in our workshops, because again, it's really quite mind blowing. So um, I've compiled a few things here. One of them is, there we go. Some of the work done by William Patton and uh, what, the, what they've been doing is doing like um, little avatars to represent themselves. And this is going to go on a, on a billboard. And they, you'll see that there's a lot of imagination, even though some children have said um, famously, Tristan, who did the uh, octopus boy, said, oh, I have no imagination. I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> so this is some work that we've been doing with the, the Shakespeare Walk Adventure Playground. And this is um, much more like a, a first piece, like a background that we then cutting to cover with cut out photos and things like that. And this is the first time some of the children are seeing the work from the other groups as well. So that's quite nice. And then we have, uh, we're working with Stockington School and they've produced some of these beautiful sort of drawings that are going to come together as well so you can see that there's a real love of of drawing and and imagination charlie's mind is blown 
<laughs> Maybe okay, I'll start. Uh, to, and I think, I think Charlie, do you do you have a question? Okay, go on then. Uh, yes, this is one for Mike Perkins. Um, what other like Marvel Marvel characters do you do? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm mostly my name is mostly connected with uh, Winter Soldier um, because the uh, the film was kind of based on the the comics that I drew. Um, so it's it's mostly that, but it really, if if you name a Marvel character, I've probably drawn them. <laughs> um, oh, lots! Of, I did a long run, mostly Captain America, a few Spider-Man, um, a bit of Fantastic Four, um, quite a run on X-Men for a while. So, so yeah, quite quite a few, really. And also, what was the first character you basically started on? Who? Um, you mean professionally? Yeah, sort of. Well, when um, you first started, basically. Yeah, well, I, I loved 2000 AD when I was growing up. So when I first got into comics, I, um, I wanted to work for 2000 AD. And my second piece of professional work was for Judge Dredd, who's the main character in 2000 AD. Uh, um, so that was very, very shocking for it to be my second piece of work. I, I thought, oh, no, I have to build up to this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my second piece of work so it was uh it was a bit nerve-wracking yeah when wh how old were you when you did this piece of work mike uh i think it was 24, 24. when i did judge dread yeah so so I've, I've got a question for for you and and for for all our artists our, our professional artists because we have young artists who are certainly qualifying to that title too but um so did you um, did you always know that you wanted to do drawing and you wanted to go into comics? Uh, yeah, for me, totally. From when I was two years old, I knew that I, I wanted to do comics. Um, and so to, to do it every day now, it's it, you, you're still kind of feeding that inner child in a way. <laughs> yes. What, what about you, um, uh, Jessica? So I'm the latecomer to the party because, as you rightly said, Catherine, I've had a career as an actress. I'm also a mum, um, without telling the children my exact age, but my little children, my son is 23 and my daughter 20. So I am, in making comics, I'm feeding the forgotten child who, from the age of three, used to love drawing. When I was a child, I didn't I was a bit of a bore. I didn't like going out to play. I liked to stay indoors with my sketch pad. And I used to draw um, movies that I saw on television that I really liked. I'd sort of redraw my favourite scenes. Um, and then when I went to school, I was, art was one of my top subjects. I really didn't have, you know, as, as, as happens today, you don't get career advice on artistic subjects because they're not seen to be useful. But actually, people will agree that uh, art, films, books, anything creative takes you out of yourself and it helps you feel happy. Um, and I have found a new source of personal happiness, but also I've, I've created my own comics. I, I started doing them about nine years ago and I created them, I self published them, uh, but I'm very lucky because I've now got this career to my performing and I'm actually working on a graphic novel that's going to be published next year about so the children won't know who this actor is and a lot of grown-ups don't know who he is but you all know the character the Joker in Batman am I right hopefully everyone knows the Joker so Joker was first drawn in the 1930s by an artist called Bob Kane and he like myself he got his inspiration from the movies and there was a famous film called The Man Who Laughs with a quite spooky clown character called Gwyn Plain. And the actor who played that character was called Conrad Veit. He was a German actor and he had a very interesting life. So my graphic novel that I'm creating at the moment is about this actor. So you can make comics about anything you like. You can make comics about cheese. I see we've got a cheese person here, but you, seriously, there's no bounds. Right. Mike, Mike Collins, what's your turn? The same, same as the other Mike. I was sketching 
on steamed up windows when I was three years old. Um, I recently found a big box in the garage, uh, which has got all these exercise books I filled with science fiction <laughs> superhero <laughs> stories. Say you found all these old windows that you'd, <laughs> you'd drawn on when you were little. That would be entirely possible in my garage. Um, <laughs> But no, so I've always drawn comic strips, but actually, um, and this is interesting following from what Jessica's saying, is that I was persuaded not to do art. I ended up going and um, studying law at university. And um, I always in my head was going to be the barrister that drew Spider-Man. And I re <laughs> reached, reached a certain point in my legal career where I realised I actually wasn't that good at it at all. And I thought, well, let's just get rid of the, the barrister wig and let's just draw Spider-Man. So that's pretty much what I did, <laughs> and uh, just do the career in comics, and I'm 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 here still now. I mean, you should have gone to Daredevil. That's what it was. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I see that we have a few questions popping up. So, okay. Siri, do you want to um, to ask your question? Um. So, my question is how. Like, have you made any original characters that have gone into like anything? Like, have you made any just generally? Is that sort of thing you do? Or, like, I'm not sure. Do you want to do that first, Mike? Because um, you've got the Winter Soldier, haven't you? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Winter Soldier came, well, it was, it was me and Steve Epting who developed it. Yeah. Um, and we developed a, a bunch of other characters around that. Um, I've, I've developed a, a lot of characters at Marvel um, that haven't really gone into other media yet. Um, and I've also created my own um, comics as well, um, which is more kind of horror based. So when you're older, you'll be able to read it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always fun to see your, your stuff in a, a different medium. But it's also, I mean, for, for, for me, it's kind of, it's first and foremost it's important to do the the comic you know it, it's um for me it's it's all about getting the comic on the page getting the drawings on the page if something comes out to that then that's great um but it, for me it's the comic the first and foremost how do you yeah, get your inspiration I, sorry i was gonna ask what how do you get your inspiration for these characters what inspires you um well with uh, rowan's ruin which was a horror thing it was it was a kind of strange situation where um, I was at, we swapped a house with, with, with somebody um, for a holiday. Uh, we were living over in, in America, they were living over here. And um, we house swapped. And our house is kind of spotless over there. And we, we got there and the, the fridge was growing. There were hideous things growing in the fridge. There were, the, the, everything was untidy, it was a mess. And um, I kind of sat down in the living room and I went, oh, this is a nightmare. And then I started thinking, well, what if it was a real nightmare? What if you did a house swap and there was a ghost in that house? And so that's, that's kind of where that idea came from, really. But yeah, the influences, ideas, you know, who knows where they come from most of the time. <laughs> Brilliant. Mike, did you want to add something as well, Mike Collins? Uh, obviously, nobody here has watched Peacemaker because it's um, a, a TV show for slightly older kids. <laughs> but um, the Judah Master character on that is one that I created about 25 years ago. And it was really just a throwaway character. But apparently James Gunn really liked the look of the character and included him on the TV show. So they completely out, totally out of the blue. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And but, Jessica, um, you've got um, a fantastic um, sort of credit to your name is that you, you were the first comic artist to draw your own character on from TV. Uh, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> I was asked to draw um, a Doctor Who comic and the writer, Richard Dinnick, had centred the story or centred the story. The, the protagonist, the lead character in the story was Mags, the character that I played X years ago. Um, and I have the comic in my hand here. So uh, there you go. So colouring by the very talented Charlie Kirchhoff. But there, there I am drawing. That's my character in another time and universe. So 
amazing. You never know what things from your past can come and re revisit you. Um, but I was going to say, I have, I have created, although my character is not in any of the big, you, you know, superhero universes, this was my very first graphic novel that was published in 2015. And my character, Elsie, is a girl who is a teenager in the 1930s. And I just thought I wanted to write a rags to riches story. And usually in the rags to riches films that I see, you know, if it's about showbiz, it's always about somebody becoming a famous movie star. And I thought I would write something about people behind the scenes, especially as I've met so many people who are, you know, comic, we've got my, my friends here, the two Michaels are comics illustrators. I know a lot of comics writers and in, in real life, but in the history of film, so much of the old movies were reliant on having fantastic artists who could make models, who could paint scenes that looked as if they were real on the screen. So, so my girl Elsie has a journey going from being a storyboard artist to do, being a screenwriter. Uh, so again, you can create whatever world you want to, you know, maybe you want to do Wonder Woman, but maybe you want to create your own little world of of whoever, so or whoever, yeah. So when, when you when happened. you were developing your your own thing, did you did you cast it in your head? Did you, did you say, okay, this person could play this person? Oh yes, oh yes. I had a, a, a handsome leading man who was in a lot of pirate films, and he was based on Errol Flynn, who was a famous right. swashbuckler. The children ask your grandparents who Errol Flynn is, but he was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and my leading lady looked a little bit like Olivia de Havilland, who was Errol Flynn's co-star in a lot of films. And her, her equivalent nowadays would be somebody like Florence Pugh. But um, it's always, I find it useful. I don't know how, actually, Michael, Michael, Michael I think your, your art is very representational. So for me, I like to have as much reference because I'm not very confident making things up out of my head. But I guess you guys, with your time and, and experience, you can probably just kind of whip it out of the ether or from your mental back catalogue. But I, found, I find it interesting to have an image of a person or a place and, and incorporate that into my story. Oh, it, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. We've got um, we've got quite a few questions coming up, so um, I'm going to ask Carmen to unmute, and then Charlie, you'll be next, then Nana, then Alba. Hi, uh, my question is for Jessica. So I heard she does comics, like I do, and she's done voiceovers. My dream is to become a voice actor and a, an illustrator. Well. Um, so I want to ask a bit about that. And I also want to show you what I've been doing right now. Yeah. Well, Carmen, lovely to meet you. And you're looking at the living proof that you don't have to do one thing. And, act and actually, in this day and age, I know that your generation are going to be the generation that is, you are, you're living in the multiverse. You're going to be multitasking. You have multi-careers. And actually, do you know what there is? no reason with all of the facilities that you have. So you have all these amazing apps. Um, can you see this strange thing that looks like a birdcage in the back of the room? Okay, I'm gonna bring this forward. So <coughs> this is my, this is my voiceover. Uh, <laughs> so in there I've got a microphone and I've got headphones. And sometimes when I record my voiceovers, I can literally plug in everything to my computer and I can send the tapes off to my agent. So, so Carmen, good luck. Can we see your work, please? Absolutely. I've just been drawing this right now. Oh, cool. wow. That's amazing. <laughs> She's Excellent. What's her story? I can't hear. I think the it, there's a there's yeah. A, she's frozen. Oh, so she'll she'll come back. Um, 
maybe what we'll do is that we'll make sure to ask Carmen to to tell us about it. But Carmen does a lot of. She's also a multi-talented artist. She's doing a lot of things. Oh, she's, she's back. She's back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Carmen, can you tell us something? You have frozen for a second. Um, Jessica was asking what the story was of your character. Um, not really thinking about it. I'm just, I just make things up, and I don't always think about the story. I, I normally think about the character first, and then think about their story. Yeah, Maybe that's I think right. about the I like drawing superheroes. I've actually done a comic called Mega Girls about three superheroes. Um, let me see if I can find it. Maybe I can show. You. <laughs> okay, we'll get back to you once you found it. Okay, Carmen. Um, you, you've got it? Uh, no, I might have to go find it, like literally go find it. No worries. That's okay. But you know, like um, we, we can always do that later as well if we need to, okay? Um, Charlie, Charlie, do you want to ask your question now? Hello, me again. Um, I just have to, um, this is a question for all of the artists in this, um, in this Zoom, except for the kids, and I'm talking about all of the kids, not me. Um, what is your most difficult drawing you've had to encounter? <laughs> well, this is the most difficult question. Uh... Mike, you wanna you wanna go? I'm I'm still I'm, thinking. Because I do start think... off with Mike Collins and then end with Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I do. Uh, so do I do the Doctor Who comic strip and I do storyboards for the show. Mm. So uh, a, a big thing with my artwork is I have to draw people looking realistic. Yeah. Um, so I've got to make people look absolutely as they are. Now, what I've found over the years is that if I'm drawing an actor. And I've got lots of reference to that actor. I can get a pretty decent likeness. But quite recently, I got asked to do a series of portraits of local musicians here in Cardiff. Now, the ones I didn't know, I drew really easily. The people I knew really well were so difficult to draw. <laughs> and it's a funny thing. It's almost like because I've got a mental image of that person or I've, I've known them for 10 or 20 years, I've got, always, I've, I've got a, a view of them, but that's not how they look. So, like the people that I know vaguely, easy to draw. But it's it's the, the closer it is to you, the harder it is to draw. That's the thing I found. It's <laughs> the opposite of what you'd expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did an adaptation of um, the Stand with Stephen King. Uh, I did a comic adaptation of it, and um, it was it was very difficult to approach it and to um, come up with the characters, how they would look. And it, and it wasn't so much, a, it was a difficult process to do that. It was more the case of millions and millions of people have read the book. And mm. each one of those people who've read that novel, they see the characters in their own minds. So it was very difficult to, to actually get on the page my perception of it without millions of people saying oh no no that's not how i saw it um, i actually saw your um um i saw all of your um work online with my dad um oh, excellent. and i see i see what you mean by like detail with mike collins how you mm. gotta make it really detailed and like how it's like gonna look realistic with all the shadows and ink plots yeah yeah they, uh, quite yeah, often they, these days, you've got the, the actors have to approve things as well. Oh, so you, yes. have to, you have to keep the actors happy. <laughs> yes, totally. But yeah, the, um, I, I, I stopped worrying about it when I did my character sketches and I sent them to Stephen King. And he, re, he sent me another email and said, oh, this is how I saw it when I wrote the book. So at that point, <laughs> I was like, oh, nothing else matters. <laughs> Jessica. I can tell you off the bat, the most difficult thing, and I, I can show it to you. So this drawing here is, oh. it's a room that is the art studio. I mentioned this, so here we go, plugging my book again, Elsie Harris. So <laughs> Elsie goes to a film studio and she goes to the art director's, well, the room where all the artists are. So 
the big challenge for me, and, and this proves ignorance is bliss. I walked into doing comics because I'd drawn, I'd drawn a lot of people. I hadn't drawn a lot of backgrounds. When you do comics, oh my goodness, it is like a boot camp for drawing and, and for my money, you know, there's a lot of modern art. Now, without being too hard on modern art, but you can, you can sort of get away with things, can't you? You could sort of, you know, make something and, and say something about it, and then it's art. In comics, the sort of comics that you obviously love because you all know about superheroes, etc. you've got to draw things that look real. And to do that, there's this thing called perspective. Some of you may know what perspective is. <laughs> perspective is the point of view. If you're looking up at something, if you're looking down at it, and it's got, if it's not right, the picture doesn't look right. And to this day, the hardest thing for me is getting, is, is using my imagination like a camera and trying to imagine things. So again, I just literally drawn this afternoon. I asked my son to pose for a picture and I asked him to pick up a box because I wanted to show a hand picking up a box. And I thought, I'm not going to guess this. Let's do this as well as we can. So I take, I probably take a lot longer than a lot of really experienced, you know, diehard professionals. But the effort is worth it because your picture, when you do the comic, it's going to be, it's your legacy. It's going to be there forever. So I'll try. But yeah. So like the background is hard for you. Yes. And uh, mm. with Mike and other Mike, it's harder with detail of the characters. There's difficulties everywhere be. with it, yeah. But you, yeah. you, you do, um, as Jessica says, you, you, you want to get it right, so you, you plug at it, and that, that's the one thing about comic artists is that um, we are basically getting paid for something that we can't help doing. We just draw, <laughs> and it's lucky that we get paid to draw because that's all we're doing anyway. When I go on holiday, I draw, uh, I draw walls, I draw strange faces of people and. You know, if you're wandering around Spain, you see somebody with a really odd face. What I've learned about this, and this is a very good trick to remember, is if you see somebody with a very interesting face, mm. the reason you think it's interesting is because it's probably a bit weird. If you start drawing them while they're there, they get very upset when they realise what you're doing. So you have to <laughs> learn to remember what faces look like. It's quite a good discipline to remember something you've seen and draw it later <laughs> so you don't get beaten up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Nana, do you want to ask your question? What is your favorite um, drawing and why? Great question. Thank you, Nana. Mm. 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 <laughs> another, another tough one. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. The, the drawing of our own or drawing in general? Drawing that you drew. Oh, right. that's even harder. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can point at thousands of things that other people have drawn. <laughs> Jessica, go for it. Oh, let me have. A, I'm oh, I'm drawing this Conrad book at the moment. I'm doing the pencils, um, and I'm I. There are some things that I look at that I'll get back to that later. But there are some things that I look at and I sort of think, oh, it's all. You know, when there's a good picture, I don't know if you guys feel like it, but it's like Michelangelo said that a sculpture is actually something that already exists. He was just right. taking away the marble to reveal the thing that was there. And sometimes it can happen when you're drawing, you just go to this place and you draw it and you think, I didn't expect it to look, it may not even look how you planned it, but it looks pleasing. And it's not to do with being perfect or anything. There's just something, maybe it's to do with, the composition like the shape that you made or the shading that you did but come on let's be honest if we didn't enjoy our drawing or we didn't like looking at our work we wouldn't be here having this conversation so right. apologies for being immodest but you've got to love what you do you've got to love your babies yeah and they and they always say that your your favorite piece of work should be your next piece of work yes that's the yeah <laughs> but saying that i did draw this the other day and i really liked it let me see Oh, wow. That was a um, a Green Lantern swamp thing uh, that's, that's coming up. You haven't seen it. You haven't seen that picture. All right, maybe. <laughs> Top secret. 
There was something interesting you said, Jessica, earlier that I kind of, this reminds me of when I seeing this drawing is that you talked about, you know, the colorist and the writer. And I think that's quite an interesting part about comics is that there's loads of different jobs. So, mm -hmm. um, so can you tell us a bit more about that maybe? Yes. So comics is very much a collaborative process and, and the Michaels will testify. So they do the drawing part and then you've got someone who's a writer and, and a, maybe an amazing writer like Stephen King who does a story. And the reason for that is, so I've spoken about my own works. Now they're a lot, of, a lot more small scale. They're what we call independent comics. But when you're doing something for a company like Marvel or DC, we're talking about these are the equivalent of, you know, it's like Netflix on television. It's for a big, big audience and the stakes are high. So it is about excellence. Um, ch children, Catherine, you don't know, well, you're, you're lucky, but actually I'm not surprised the two Michaels and other people I know in the comics field are so generous with their time. They're not, uh, they haven't got egos. It's, oh my God, no, darling, I'm, I'm too busy. I'm do, uh, working on a multi-million project. But these projects, they've got a lot of money invested. And so the writers are the top draw. They are your Neil Gaiman's and, you know, and Stephen King and other names, you know. So the, the artists are the top, the very top of their game. And the colorists as well, they spend time. It, it's the detail and the um, eye that they have for putting those finishing touches. So what you end up with is everybody. And so you have people that do pencil work and you have people that do the ink on top of that. Everybody is the best. It's like being in a world-class football team. You've got a winning team. And so the people that are publishing these works are confident that you know the audience the audience don't say oh my look at this this is award-winning that's people in the industry to do but the audience are happy and that's the thing they don't want somebody saying oh this doesn't look right this isn't what we expected or this isn't it's got to be it's it's magic you don't want anyone questioning the illusion that the story's continuing and we're still in that universe so the the uh, the world of comics is literally it's like the world of film, television, publishing, it's not just one person, it's a, it's a group, a wonderful group of hugely talented people who make that happen. Thank you. I think it's so really insightful for to know that it's not just one person that does the whole thing, you know, it's just like so people um, that have to work together. That's really interesting. Um, Alba, do you want to ask your question? Um, Hello. Hello. No, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I thought I thought Mike wanted to show off something. But, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it? What's your favourite picture? Are you going to show us? Jazz, what of mine? My drawings? No, it's, it's oh, sorry. We were cross purposes. So it was, it was for Mike Collins. Um, oh. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For yes. Apollo. Yeah. I, I did a, uh, a whole graphic novel about the first moon landing. And this picture is a really, really small part of the cover, but I spent forever doing that that that, that shot. So you you almost don't notice it on the cover, but for me that's probably the best shot I did in the whole book. Oh, amazing! <laughs> great, Thank you. great perspective. Thank you. <laughs> Alba, yeah, sorry, sorry, Alba. <laughs> We're back to you, Alba. <laughs> But my question was, um, do you prefer um, like drawing um, women or men? Like which gender do you prefer doing all the details with? Mike, do you want to answer that first? I just like drawing people. Um, the, the more interesting the face is, the more fascinating it is for me. Um, like I say, working on Doctor Who, having a face like um, Matt Smith or um, Peter Capaldi to draw was great because they've, they've both got these fabulous, almost cartoon faces. Um, the ones that were hard to draw were actually David Tennant and uh, Jodie Whittaker because they've got, they've, got, they've got pretty faces. <laughs> and it, it, it is a thing that one of, the, one of the things you have to get across when you're doing artwork is you're telling a story you're using an, an image with the least number of lines possible if you do too many lines on a face it ages the face or it makes the face look ugly or it takes it off so 
the real skill. There's, there's a, a famous comic artist of the 1940s and 50s called Alex Toth. And he said the real trick is to take out about 80% of the lines you draw to get your picture. And it's actually harder to do a picture with less lines in. So That's brilliant. So, <laughs> Thank you. I'm aware that time is passing really, really fast. Oh, and we still have a few questions, which is really... It's 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 how time time flies. Um, Evan, do you want to ask your question? I would like to. So we've got Evan, Ines, and Tristan and Siri, and I think uh, Carmen. We can sort of like your work, and I think we'll just have to stop that. I might take us okay. over by five minutes. If that's okay. Wait. Um, do do you know uh, any like famous other famous comics like uh, let's say the Phoenix, and you know some other manga example? Mm -hmm. I mean, take Naruto, My Hero Academia, or. Uh, Demon Slayer. Do you know any of those manga or anything? Oh yeah, totally, totally. What do you think um, of manga then? Okay, yeah, I, th um... I think I think with 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 manga, I think um, well, Akira is 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 oh, yeah. probably the top. Um, the, there's uh, there's one called Domu, which is which is actually brilliant. I mean, astoundingly brilliant. That's well. Uh, do you, did you do any manga drawings or something? Uh, <laughs> not me personally, no. no. Ah. My, uh, just... What's interesting is I did an adaptation of A Christmas Carol, the Charles Dickens novel, um, about 10 years or so ago. And the writer of that was actually a manga writer. Mm -hmm. And so he paced out the story as if it was manga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Evan. We might not. <laughs> we might need to, <laughs> to move on to Ines and Tristan. Do you mind muting yourself, Evan? Are you my name? Is there we go. Uh, Ines and Tristan, your question. Yeah. So my question was, how do you exactly become a illustrator? Or yeah, the small matter. Well, Marvel. So this is for both Mike and Jessica. I, it's just no one in particular. How did you get to be at the point you are? Mm. There's uh, there's a couple of origin stories for me. Um, the uh, the first one is that I, I just started drawing and I sent it out to an agent, and the agent started picking up work for me. Um, the other story, which is uh, more fun, was um, I had this friend uh, who was sending in story ideas to Marvel UK. And um, my friend was always recycling. So whenever you got a letter from him, was, there was always something that he recycled the paper. Like if there was a script, his, his letter would be on this side of it. Um, so he sent a lot of ideas into Marvel UK and they said, well, we don't, we don't really have any space for, for your ideas at the moment, but who did the drawing on the back? And, uh, and that was mine. And that's how I got into Marvel UK. So it was just a very fluky accident, really. <laughs> oh, um, I also have a question. Me and Siri drew this, this earlier today. Do you like it? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. It's like a parasite thing. And then Siri was like, what if it has a hoodie? And so that's how the, this creation was born. Oh, and Siri has the other half, which is. Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK. Excellent. <laughs> I, I, I think the best answer for breaking in is to draw and draw and draw. Mm. I think Jessica and Mike might agree with that. Just yeah. And talk, go and meet, go to comic conventions. At comic conventions, you can meet um, your favourite artists. But it was, I have been to a convention, yeah. But it was more of an anime and gaming. I went with Evan. And so, yeah, it was more cosplaying anime and Super Smash Bros. tournaments than well, Marvel. I was going to say, if I may do a cheeky plug here, because Mike Perkins and Mike Collins, are you both going to be at the London Film and Comic Con in July? Yeah. I will not, but Mike will. The other Mike. Okay, so 
fingers crossed. I th I don't know whether I've been cancelled or I'm still on the list, but I think I'm going. Um, yeah, so the London Film and Comic Con is happening in July. They're going to have so many artists, writers. They're going to have stars from all the shows. It's going to be amazing. And it's open to the public. So when is that, Jessica? That yeah. When is that happening? Oh, Just sorry. July the 8th, I think. 8th, 9th and 10th. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a fantastic thing to do. Um, um, and we still have questions, but I don't know if you have, is it okay to sort of stay on a little bit or would you, we, we, we can sort of, I think we would just really happy to have to stop, stop soon. But uh, Siri, do you want to sort of say something now? You need to unmute? Yeah, um, so I was just asking, I mean, I know the like, I, I don't know exactly, but I'm I'm very much of like a, a very I do like very types of different styles. Like you know, I do things on uh, like tablets and book and paper and anime. That's and I was just wondering, does anyone like to, to have? What do you think about like the new types of like digital art or any new styles and things like? Sorry. Anybody else want to answer that one? <laughs> Mike's showing that so Mike, you're not on. You, you've switched off. There you go. No, I, I do a lot of work these days on the iPad Pro. So I do a lot of my drawing digitally. So I'm very happy to work digitally. After years and years of using pen and ink, I've found it actually quite liberating to work and be able to undo things as opposed to having to rub them out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant. They're great. Yeah, I, I think I think you know it, it's it's it, if you look at paper, if you look at the iPad Pro, if you look at the Cintiq tablet, it's a tool, and yeah. I think it's one of those things you can use which will bring out the creativity, mm -hmm. and which what you feel comfortable with is what you should engage with and what you should bring out. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Um, Carmen, did you find your comic? Uh, no, but I will show you guys something I just drew. Also, I've also got an iPad Air and I use it for the drawing. Yeah, I was going to get my comic. I was going to get my comic. Uh... <laughs> you, you've got to hurry because we've got to finish very, very shortly, Evan. And you can remember, you can put stuff on the website that we've created so that we can always, I will share that as well later on, okay? I just drew this. Oh, wow. <laughs> just wow. now. Uh, it's, it's not just that. So it's, so it's all of this is superhero themed. I decided to... Add a little action into it. Charlie's um, got a question. He's desperate. Yes, yes. There we go. Detective Derek and Phil. <laughs> Excellent. Introducing Derek and Phil. Amazing. So you're doing. Did everybody read that? Yep. yep. A minute, That's can right. I go find my um, comic quickly? I think we're going to be running out of time. So I think, Charlie, I'm going to let, give you the last question and then we're going to okay. wrap up because we've had, it's been amazing to have your time and I don't want to abuse that either. Okay, um, last question for both of the mics. Um, did you ever get to meet Stanley? Oh. Stanley, yeah. I, I met Stanley five times and he met me once because his memory was awful. <laughs> 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 now I, I must admit i always um bottled it every time i saw stan i was just so um starstruck i couldn't do it. i met jack kirby but um right jessica stan, did you meet stan no i didn't and i i was just getting my education on who's who but i've met the most famous person internationally aside from your good selves and mark buckingham was steve <laughs> Ruth when he came over right a convention a few years ago and we were talking about Alex Tope and I thought I'm talking about Alex Tope with Steve Bruce <laughs> and he amazing. bought one of my pictures <laughs> oh wow amazing well I think we I think we could go on the children obviously have loads of, uh, it's been brilliant because I had a whole list of questions I've not really needed them because <laughs> they, I think we could go on for a while oh hang on is there some interference here yeah, there we go um I'm just going to say. Somebody's having a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm going to say a massive, massive thank you. I think we it's been really fantastic to get that first insight. And, and I think, yes, certainly recommending to the children to to keep drawing and to see if they can go to to convent to Comic Cons and things like that, because um, but thank you so, so much for your time today. And I think you've been a brilliant inspiration. And maybe you've met some of the um, the artists, uh, the, the comic artists of the future here. So who knows? They're wonderful. One thank more thing. So yes, I would like thank to you. share this. Uh, I would like to share. We can't hear you now, Evan. <laughs> I'm going to share something I wanted to share. The last All this time. <laughs> we are on the... Okay. Huh? Right, that's not it. Evan, I think what we're going to do is that I'll send an email around and if you have something that you really want to share, I'll make Hold sure on. to pass it on. Here we go. You ready? Go okay, on. let's go. Got Rick rolled, people. <laughs> we just got Rick rolled. <laughs> well done, Evan. <laughs> That's a good way to finish. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again for today. Bye. And, um, Bye. 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 Adios. Adios, people. Probably. Bye. Evan, what you make me cry? I just need to press. Bye. Sorry. Eh. Eh. <laughs> I love how they held it together, and at the end, it just had to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so so much. That was Thank so you. good. Really, really, Thank really you. appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll yeah, let you go. Okay. Bye -bye. See you, Mike. Bye-bye. See you soon. Uh -huh.